What is up everybody, Gary Simon here. So today I'm gonna be showing you how to use a really cool plugin called Metaballs, all right? So Metaballs allows you to create these really cool, smooth flowing shapes in SVG format that you can then use on the front end. Now, if you tried to recreate this by hand, and I'm sure a lot of you newbies have tried doing this with the pen tool, it's very frustrating. There's a much simpler way and that is with the Meta tool, Metaballs plugin. Um, so not only am I gonna show you how to use this in the context uh, of a UI design app like Figma, but also you're not gonna get this type of stuff anywhere. I'm also gonna show you front end development. I'm gonna show you how to create and take one of these Matable SVGs and use it on the front end in HTML and CSS in the context of a clip path, all right? That's why you have to subscribe. You're not really gonna find too many people showing you the design and the coding. So what are you waiting for? Click the subscribe button and let's get started. Now, wait one second. We're gonna be diving into a little bit of CSS here. And if you're interested in that sort of thing, then you may want to become a front end developer. If that's the case, you should definitely check out scrimma.com, who's the sponsor of this video. They recently launched their front end development career path, which is a collection of courses that cover HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, and much, much more, as you see. It's over 75 hours of awesome content. There are hundreds of interactive coding challenges and it's all geared towards helping you go from beginner to someone that's hireable as a front-end developer. So click on the very top link here in the YouTube description to get access to the front-end developer career path at scrimba.com. Alrighty, let's get started here. So I am here in the figma.com forward slash community page and I'm going to search for meta space balls. <laughs> uh, oh wait, no, no space. Meta balls, all one word. There we go. Um, plugins, one. Okay, so as you can see, I already have it installed. Go ahead and install this. Um, and we're gonna create a new frame here in a new document in Figma. Um, doesn't really matter. Let's just do desktop 1440 just to show how we can rock this. All right, so um, the first thing we'll do is take our ellipse tool or O on your keyboard, and we're just going to start drawing out perfect shapes, uh, spheres, or circles, whatever. Um, hold shift while you're doing that. Um, you can also hold shift and alt to go straight from the center of wherever your origin point is. And you want these to be pretty close to each other, otherwise the results uh, won't look good. I suppose we can experiment with that. Um, we could do another one over here, perhaps. I uh, will duplicate this over here just to give ourselves an idea of what happens um, when you don't do the things correctly. You can of course have them be different sizes um, and you can do as many as you want. All right, so let's go ahead and check out the results here. Let's do kind of just the same approach over here just to see how the thing behaves, uh, the plugin rather. So let's right click plugins and we will find made of all right there. All right, so if we uh, click on this and hit create, there we go. It creates these little sections in between that smoothly joins them. All right, so that's very cool. Um, let's hit create again, there we go. And then we could try it with this one. As you can see, there's a, a weird shape that's created in between them. Still does a pretty good job right here, but um, you, I suppose you could fill this in right here um, and join those shapes as well. So actually, it seems like it, it does a pretty good job of making a nice smooth connection, something that you wouldn't be able to do obviously freehand, it would be very difficult. Um, we could just go like this. All right, um, and let's hit I here just for the heck of it. There we go. Um, and so then what we could do is we could take all these and then we could just choose to uh, unions of the selection, but also if we right click, we could choose flatten. So now it is one single unified shape. And actually, you know what? I, I really like this one more than I, what I created over here originally. So I'm just gonna delete that. And there you go. So you can create, uh, obviously separate them pretty far apart and it will still work well. I really like just this general shape right here. So now what can we do with this from a UI slash graphic design perspective? Uh, this could be uh, sit suitable for, to, for any number of different situations. So I can think of one right here, say we have like a headline, my uh, awesome headline. 
Maybe we're gonna make this really large. I, okay, that's a little bit too large. <laughs> you don't wanna do that. Um, something like that. Maybe we'll use a font like Nunito. All right, because it's kind of soft type of font as well. Uh, we'll make this bold. Um, maybe we'll yeah, make this a little bit less height. Um, and maybe we'll give it some color, you know, something like, or we could do something very soft like this, kind of like a watermark. And then maybe you'll have your sub headline down here, you know, maybe that's like 28 for size and it's regular to get that visual hierarchy going. Um, maybe we'll have our Lorem Ipsum plugin to generate just some type here. So something like this, it could be used, uh, and then you can export it as an SVG. Um, you could also do something like this. So let's uh, let's scale this down to 20, move this over, maybe move this over, just to give ourselves some room. So you could also do something like this. So we'll go to our plugins and we will choose Unsplash. So you can use it as a mask as well. So um, let's just do food, I don't know. All right, let's choose, let's just choose this one. All right, so let's uh, scale this down a bit. We're gonna put it over the entire union right there and just select those two elements, the actual Meta Ball and the photograph and then choose use as mask. And look at that. Look how cool that is. So you may be wondering then, how exactly do we actually realize this in the front end, HTML and CSS, of course. Uh, it's actually a little bit tricky if we're talking about the intricacies and being able to scale it proportionally with the SVG mask, but we can still do it and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that now. All right, so the first thing we'll do here, is we are gonna go back to Figma in a second, but I'm here in Visual Studio Code with a new empty folder. We're gonna create an index.html, exclamation point enter to get some rough HTML starter going. Uh, we're going to put uh, a reference to uh, CSS, main.css file. So we'll create a CSS folder to create that. We're not gonna use SAS or anything because it's gonna be a very simple example, not a full example, of course. Uh, let's call this meta balls and Let's save for now and let's go back here. And what we wanna to do to get this thing ready is if we open up uh, this area where it says a union, we can still see we have all this stuff individually. Um, what I'm gonna do first is just copy this union, come out here to the frame and then paste it separately. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll right click and choose flatten. All right, so now it's a single flattened thing. Otherwise, I think the SVG that it produces will be quite large if you left all these things in there. So what we can do now is right click, copy um, and paste as SVG. So now it's copied as SVG. We can go back to our project here and we're going to simply reference it here in the HTML. So first I'm gonna put everything in um, something called a, a div class container. I don't think this is really necessary, but we'll be able to move it around um, if you want to, if you put it in a container. Um, and then what we'll do is we're gonna put an image, source equals whatever that food image was that we had. So a real quick tip about that, <laughs> my messy, sort of messy desktop, it's actually not that bad. Um, we'll come here to, this area, we're gonna get our Unsplash. Now, if we click on View on Unsplash, we can find it here. And I'm just gonna download the medium version of this. And I'm going to open that up in my folder. And that's showing on my other monitor. And I'm going to simply drag it into our uh, project right here. So we have this, drag it in, right click, rename. We'll just call this food. And then we're going to reference our food.jpg alt food. All right, so after that, what we're going to do is we are going to paste our SVG that we have. Now we have to work with this a little bit. Um, we're gonna set the width and height to zero, um, simply because this SVG itself isn't gonna be something that displays the path or the SVG. We're gonna be referencing this as a clip path in CSS. So that means we have to add two additional HTML elements, SVG-based elements. First is gonna be defs, 
<laughs> not that, D-E-F-S, and then we're going to also reference uh, clip path. Actually, I might as well just type this in, clip path, and then ID equals, we'll just call this Clippy. This is what we're gonna be referencing. Clippy is gonna be the ID that we reference here uh, in CSS in a second. So now we're just gonna close both of those and then also close that. Let's get this stuff uh, styled up correctly. And there we go. So at this point, uh, if you have the live server ex uh, extension, which you can install here, you can right click, open with live server, and we'll see what is happening so far. Of course, nothing's working correctly, which we wouldn't expect to anyways, because we haven't dealt with the CSS. So in our CSS file, what we're going to do is we're going to do image. Let's make this a little bit larger. You can see it. Um, we're going to have clip path property URL clippy, little clippy. <laughs> so does that change anything? Yes, it does. As you can see, we now have uh, our little clippy situation going on here. Now let's uh, also change and give ourselves a specific width of like 40M units uh, by 40M units right here. We'll save that. All right, and look at that. Um, so if we decided to that we wanna change the size of this actual SVG um, or, or, or the, the clip path, um, we're not going to be able to do it with how we currently structured everything. So what we can do to make it so that we can actually change the size of this SVG, because remember, when that image was real big, it was still only this size off to the side. So if we want to scale this whole thing up and down, we have to add an attribute to our clip path property. And that is going to be clip path units equals object bounding box. All right, so if I save it now, it went away. Why did that go away? Well, if we look at these uh, attributes here, you can see they're all large numbers, 311, uh, 113, 361 in the D attribute of the path property. Um, in order for object bounding box to work, all these values have to be less than one. All right, one or less than one. The way we do that, and there might be a tool to, to automate this process, there probably is, um, but the way we do that is we're gonna go back over here, we're gonna select this original element right here, and we're going to turn on constrained proportions, and whichever is the highest value, uh, right now, for me, the width is the larger value, at 621, we're going to hit one and enter. Now, it disappears, uh, and that's fine, but this is what we want. We want both of these values, width and height, less than one. And now we're gonna right click, copy as SVG. We're gonna go back to our code editor. And then I'm just going to paste real quickly. We'll get rid of this. We'll get rid of these as well. So we have a new path party. Now look at these values. These are all less than one. So now if we come back, and we look at our Metaballs project. All right, so if we refresh, this is the size of it right now. Now, if we change in our CSS, the size, this should scale down as well. So right, right now we're at 40 M units. If we change this back to, let's say 20. Ah, what am I doing? Save it. There you go, the whole thing scales proportionally. All right, and that is it. So that's how you use Metaballs to create these really cool sort of flowing illustrations. All right, everybody, let me know what you think. If you like this, make sure to subscribe up. Definitely check out designcourse.com to become a great UI UX designer. And also check out the front end developer career path at scriba.com. All right, enough with the spam. See you soon, goodbye.